of Duty Black Ops Cold War is set between Black Ops 1 and 2. It's a sequel to the original, not a reboot like last year's Modern Warfare, and given that it's been 10 years since Black Ops, I'll bet you forgot a bunch of what happened in that game. So this video is gonna boil down the plot to get you ready for Black Ops Cold War. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Where are they brought I don't know from? anything about any numbers. The main story of Black Ops. When you reduce all the noise and flashing numbers, the plot of Call of Duty Black Ops 1 is pretty straightforward. It's a story about a man undergoing two competing brainwashing programs. One to work for Russia and kill an American president, and the counter-programming to kill the Russian military leaders responsible for the brainwashing in the first place. The entire rest of the story is just about who he does and doesn't kill. Revenge! Mason, no! The players. Alex Mason, a CIA officer, is captured in Cuba after a failed attempt on the life of Fidel Castro during the Bay of Pigs. The Bay of Pigs was a real-life botched operation to train Cuban exiles and land them back in Cuba to overthrow Castro. Black Ops builds off of the military disaster that ensued, and in its story, Castro sets up a trap to capture high-level Americans who could get close to key American leaders. Mason is taken and sent to a Russian labor camp called Vorkuta in order to be made into a sleeper agent through an experimental brainwashing program run by Russian Major General Nikita Dragovich. Dragovich's plan is to send sleeper agents back to the United States and trigger them at the right time to do very bad things like kill the president. The pre-programmed trigger is to be broadcast off of a ship called Rusalka through a series of mysterious numbers. Mason. You want the numbers, Mason. That's all we've ever wanted. Mason ends up being very resistant to the brainwashing program and at one point is given up as a failure. That's when Viktor Reznov, who fought for Russia during World War II and was betrayed by Dragovich, makes his move. He messes with Mason's programming and sends him to kill his own rivals, Dragovich, Kravchenko, and Stein. All must die. By the end of Black Ops 1, Reznov seems to have come out on top. Sort of. Mason kills both the Nazi scientist Steiner and the Russian commander Dragovich. But it is heavily implied, although not confirmed, that he may have also been involved in killing President John F. Kennedy, which was his original programming. It's also very likely that Viktor Reznov never actually made it out of the labor camp for Kuta, and he died at this moment in the story, and only lives on in Mason's head. I guess that's one way of not having to pay for Gary Oldman to come back. Dealer! On the ledge! Shoot him! <laughs> What you need to know for Black Ops Cold War. Now, Black Ops 1 takes place between 1961 and 1968. We recently got to see a single player presentation for Black Ops Cold War, and the developer said that we would be returning to 1968 Vietnam and Laos, where we would relive a memory over and over again, recalling new details to uncover the truth about a Russian super spy named Perseus who will be the main villain of Cold War. There are a few very interesting loose ends from the Black Ops 1 story that takes place in that year. For starters, Frank Woods, a main character who you fight alongside in Black Ops 1, is presumed dead in 1968 after saving your life. We know from later Black Ops games that he was actually captured and sent to the infamous torture prison known as the Hanoi Hilton. We never learned how he actually managed to escape, but we do know that he was then moved to Da Nang as a prisoner of war until at least 1972. Kravchenko, who was on the list of people Mason was supposed to kill, is still alive. He's mostly been built as a comically evil character, and there's a lot of room for him to grow and become more important in Cold War flashbacks. And during our time with the single player presentation, we also saw flashbacks to Nazis in World War II. It's highly possible that the plot may return to the currently deceased Friedrich Steiner, a captured Nazi scientist instrumental in the Vorkuta brainwashing program, and who also developed an extremely dangerous chemical weapon called Nova 6. Now, Nova 6 is still in play and is a recurring threat throughout the Black Ops series that continues past the timeline of the Cold War game. Nova 6 was just one of the sleeper operations, but I'm sure there were others, ones we didn't even know about. What we know about Cold War's plot. The main part of Cold War takes place in 1981, which is 13 years after Black Ops 1 and the failure of the numbers program. However, the Soviet Union hasn't given up plotting to bring down America and have leaned into a long-term strategy that takes 
decades. This was revealed in the Know Your History trailer as active measures, which has phases including demoralize, destabilize, create crisis, and then normalize a soft government takeover. Part of this program involves sabotaging and stealing military assets, and we know one of the main antagonists, Perseus, is running around stealing nuclear secrets and trying to keep Russia's nuclear program one step ahead of the United States. It's your job to try and stop them. In the meantime, Russia is still training to invade the United States by building mock towns and practicing assaults on them. Although Mason, Woods, and Jason Hudson are in Cold War, a cast of new characters seem to be the ones hunting Perseus, including a CIA officer named Russell Adler. Lead writer Murray Kraft said that players are supposed to question his intentions, and we know the game has multiple endings, so we might be looking at an unreliable narrator. So where do you think the Cold War story is gonna go, and where it might circle back on loose ends in Black Ops 1? Let us know in the comments below, and if you want to learn more about Cold War, check out our extensive Everything You Need to Know video. Thanks for watching.